Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to use a keypad with an Arduino and how to process the entered characters and numbers. And uh, the reason why I do this is because a lot of people suggested me to improve my control panel for stepper motors by uh, adding a keypad. So this guy here because it would be much easier to modify and enter the numbers and different parameters by uh, using a keypad. And in fact, I already started to work on this. So here is the first, uh, let's say, prototype of the new uh, control panel. So this will be presented in an upcoming video. But uh, in this video, I just want to talk about the details because I was not really sure about uh, these keypads, I have never worked with them, so I learned uh, how to work with them. And then I want to show you uh, the same thing that I learned. So you will see how to enter uh, characters, how to process them, and then uh, I will show you the source code and of course you will be able to see everything. So the circuit is the following. We have an Arduino Nano here. And the only thing that we are using here is the 5 volt connection and the I2C connection. So we have a 16 by 2 LCD. We will show different information on this, basically the entered uh, characters. And uh, this is connected by I2C. So data SDA goes to A4 pin and uh, clock SCL goes to A5 pin. And then here we have an IO uh, multiplexer uh, module uh, which has eight pins which can be selected as input or output, it doesn't matter. And uh, this is the PCF8574 uh, uh, chip. You can also select the address uh, by changing the uh, jumper pins here and also uh, it has four pins, so actually you can chain these uh, together uh, in multiple times, so you can have several uh, I.O. boards connected together. And uh, this is also communicates uh, with the microcontroller via I2C. So, why I'm using this is because uh, this keypad by default has eight pins, and I will explain you uh, why it has eight pins. But uh, this has eight pins and I did not want to use eight pins from a microcontroller because that's uh, pretty much unnecessary. So instead of that, it's much easier to just use a uh, I2C I.O. module. So then we basically simplified those eight pins to two or four pins, depends on how you look at it. But let's say two pins because uh, the communication goes through the uh, I2C pins and uh, you would use the power pins so the plus 5 volt and the ground anyway if you have something uh, connected to your arduino so we arrived uh, to the final part which is this keypad and uh, how it works is uh, relatively simple so uh, you have four pins uh, to, to select a row and you have four pins to select a column so what happens is that you raise uh, one of the pins uh, out of these uh, eight pins uh, to high and then that will select a row and then uh, that will uh, put everything to high and then you start reading the pins uh, when, when this uh, row is uh, selected and when you press the button one of these pins where, where you press the, 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 the key or the button within within a row uh, will jump to ground and this is what you read and this happens very quickly uh, after each other so you select a row and read uh, the columns you go to the next row read the columns and so on and so on and this goes on and on and uh, that is what happens uh, inside this IO module and I will show you in the code because it's more easy to explain there but technically that's what. So uh, we have a matrix uh, connection here. So four pins to select four, uh, one of the four rows and four pins to select one of the four columns. So whenever we press the character, something uh, will, will happen to the pins. So the output will be changed. And uh, that's what we read. And that's what we modify as well. 
So I start up the system and I show you how this happens in the practice and what I actually implemented. So this is started and I really hope that the display is uh, visible. So what we have is two lines, string and double. And of course, uh, when we work with this thing, uh, the most straightforward thing is that to press a character and then combine uh, the consecutively pressed characters into a string. That, that goes quite straightforward in the code. And then, of course, you want to pass this uh, set of numbers uh, to a variable. So, for example, if you want to set up a speed or you want, uh, if we go back to the stepper motor uh, example, you want to define a certain amount of steps and so on and so on. Uh, you, you want this uh, string to be in some numerical format, which is, for example, double, float, or integer, or something like that. So we have to do that uh, in the microcontroller. So what happens here is that I uh, press a few buttons, so that will be combined into a string, and then uh, when I uh, press a certain button on this uh, keypad, that string will be converted into a double and it will be shown in the bottom line. So that's one part which I implemented and also I implemented the delete function, let's say. So what happens is that when I press the key D, D stands for delete, uh, then uh, in the string we chop off the last uh, character uh, from the string so we delete back uh, the, from the number and this is to correct the mistakes. So I will show you how this works in practice and then of course I show you the source code how to implement this. So let's enter some kind of number. So let's say uh, 43.58. Uh, uh, so this is our string now. And if I press A, so I assign the, this uh, process uh, to the key e A, then the double line should show the same number. And again, you will see it in the code. Uh, this is not just copying this uh, same set of characters, but it takes the string variable and converts it into double. And then the double is printed here. And it's the same number. So that works uh, pretty well. So now I show you something else. So I start to enter uh, the number and I accidentally enter two decimal points, which will not be uh, processed properly when we convert to double. So you want to get rid of that uh, decimal point. I just enter one more number to make this more spectacular. So we have this, which is, uh, which is a bad format. So then we can delete this, as you can see. So it goes back. Actually, I can remove everything. And then we can enter our own number. So now 12.12. .12. So I press A again, and then it's converted. And then this works uh, pretty well uh, with, 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 with any kind of number. So 0 0.16, for example, and then, uh, sorry, then it's uh, converted. And then uh, here I just set the format to two uh, decimals. So if I enter a bit more uh, decimals than I should, uh, this will only show the first two decimal digits and of course it rounds it up but this is how i uh, implement it so i will show you how this can be extended if you want more uh, decimal digits but this is pretty much enough for yeah most of the purposes so you can see that it works and it works properly so then what i did here is that i implemented uh, these 10 numbers, 0 to 9, and then I also implemented uh, the star symbol, uh, which will be used as a decimal dot. So as you can see, if I press this, uh, you will see dots. And then I implemented the character A, but nothing prints with A, but that's the yeah conversion uh, triggering button. And then B and C does nothing, so it will not even print here. And then D is the delete. So that looks like this. So I enter a bit too much numbers. So then I can delete it back and then it converts. So now I will show you the source code. 
how it works and how you can implement this. And once again, this is a very simple example, I know, but uh, this is part of a bigger plan. So that's why I wanted to show you because uh, this can be very useful for a lot of projects where you want to use a keypad. And uh, I cannot uh, promote this thing enough that this is dirt cheap, but uh, it makes your life much easier because uh, uh, first of all, you don't have to use the very uh, valuable uh, IO pins on your Arduino or whatever microcontroller you use. And uh, it's quite uh, straightforward to uh, code this uh, stuff. So I really recommend you to get some of these uh, IO uh, extenders because they are yeah, basically just made for these kind of tasks where you need to, let's say, translate several pins into just a few pins. And it works uh, very well. So it's a very nice uh, product uh, for, for this kind of projects. So let's go to my computer and I will show you the code and I will explain how this uh, reading and writing of pins works. So we are looking at the Arduino code now and uh, let's see what is happening inside the microcontroller. So for this uh, program we need the wire uh, library because of the I2C communication. And we also uh, need the liquid crystal I2C library because of the liquid crystal uh, display that we are using. And here uh, we create uh, one instance. So we are using this uh, address for the for the LCD. And then this is a 16 by 2 LCD. And that's all we need to tell about this uh, to the uh, software. And then we have a few variables. So let's uh, look at them. So I'm using some kind of timer and this is just to not allow the software to read the buttons uh, quickly after each other because we are polling these buttons. So if I keep the button pressed or if I just don't press uh, quickly enough, uh, then the microcontroller will register multiple key presses, but we just want to have one key press at a time. So this will take care of that. And then this button pressed variable is just registers whether there was a button pressed or not, because this will uh, determine the further uh, processing uh, steps. And then we have this so-called full string, which is just the individual characters uh, concatenated to each other, and uh, therefore they will make a string. And then we have this pressed character, which is basically tells us which character was pressed uh, among these uh, 16 available uh, keys. And then uh, we have this uh, string added. So this just keeps track of the uh, chaining of the uh, characters. And uh, we need this because sometimes we press a button, but we don't want it to be included in the uh, concatenated uh, string. So that, that's why we need this variable. And then the converted number is just the final number, the final result that we have after converting the string into a double. So that's what we have here. And then the setup is very simple. So we just have the wire and we just set some clock for the I squared C, that, but maybe this is not that necessary. And then uh, I just start the serial communication and I print something on the serial port. I will, of course, uh, show you a demonstration of this. Uh, this is just to confirm that the microcontroller is running. And then we take care of the LCD. So we have to uh, start the LCD and then we put the cursor to the top left corner and print something in the first line. And then we move to the second line and after that we print another message. Then we wait two seconds and we print the permanent parts here. So this is what you saw when I showed you the uh, display and uh, I did the demonstration. So in the first line we have the string and then in the second line we have the double. And then the loop is uh, relatively clean. So we have uh, two functions. One is reading the keypad. Once again it is polling the keypad. And then uh, the other is uh, checking if something happened to the keypad. And then this goes on and on until you turn on, uh, turn off the microcontroller. So first, uh, let's see how we read the keypad because this is the core of the wall uh, strategy that we are uh, using here. 
So we are here in the read keypad uh, function. And first we look at this part. So if the button press is true, so recently there was a button press, uh, we have to see if uh, 300 milliseconds has elapsed or not. If uh, it hasn't elapsed, uh, so this is not true, then we do not do anything. Uh, otherwise, we reset the timer and we say that the button press is false, so we can look for another button press. And uh, why this is important is uh, I, will, I will show you in the latter part of this uh, code. So what we do here is that we use this IO uh, expander and therefore we have to communicate with it via the I squared C. So we reach out to it and it is placed to the 0x20 address. And then we have to send a message to it first. So what happens here is I explained that we activate a row and then we read the columns. And uh, there will be a change if uh, one of the buttons is pressed within a column or within a row and uh, that will be reflected in the message which is sent back uh, to the microcontroller from the IO board. So let's see how that happens. So I send this message to the IO board and that means that uh, the pins are activated in a certain way. So what happens is that uh, between the P7 and P4 pin of this uh, IO expander uh, the P4 is zero, and that means that the first row is activated. So whenever you press something in the first row, then uh, something will happen. But if you, s if, if you are standing at this part of the code and you press uh, other keys than the first row keys, then uh, nothing will happen. So then uh, we activated the first uh, row, we, we listened to that, and uh, then we set all the pins high uh, within this uh, row. So then we request uh, from the same address that we reached, one byte, and we see how the value of the, of the reply uh, changed as compared to the sent value. And then what you want to look for is that the changes in the first four uh, numbers if we look from P0 to P3 and uh, then that means that uh, some button was pressed and how this looks like is that for example if P0 becomes 0 uh, the P0 pin went low so that means that the number one uh, key number one was pressed and uh, if we translate this binary number into a decimal number then uh, we can yeah, build up this kind of condition. So if we received this number from the uh, IO board, then we know that we press pressed the key number one. So what we do here is that the pressed character will be one, and then uh, we know that a button was pressed, so that is true. And since this is a numerical value, it's a number, we want to add it to the string. So we make this true. And then we move on and uh, we can see that if the answer uh, has this kind of uh, pattern, which means that the P1 became zero here, then we know that the button number two was pressed in the first uh, row. And then we do the same practice or same exercise, but with uh, number two. And then uh, we look for this, so if this was the reply, uh, that means that the P2 became zero, then we know that the key number three was pressed. And then uh, this binary number corresponds to this decimal number. So if uh, this decimal number came back, then uh, we do these kind of uh, changes. And finally, uh, we see if, that, if the P3 became zero, this one here, then we know that the last uh, key or last button in this row was pressed, which is the A button. So therefore, we do something. And here, as you can see, I don't have the string added equals true uh, part because we don't want to add a letter to the string because that would not be 
uh, yeah, translated into the double. So we skip this, but we will do something uh, with this uh, character uh, later. And then uh, we, we read the first row, so what we have to do is we have to move to the second row and read it. So what we do is then we send another message and if you see uh, this uh, pattern carefully then the zero moved towards the left so towards the p7 by one uh, character so if I jump back uh, you can see that the zero is located here at p4 but now it is at p5 so this activates the second row in the in the keypad and then we do the same exercise with the uh, columns so everything is set to high and then uh, we check the same uh, things so for example we know that the second row is activated uh, and then we get this answer so this means that the p0 went low so in the second row we pressed the first uh, column which is the key number four and then uh, we do the same exercise and then uh, this goes on and on with the same pattern as I explained for the first row so this is checked and then we move to the third line so you can see that this zero moved towards uh, the p7 and now it's at p6 so that means we activated the third line and then uh, we set everything to high so basically these uh, four and we see which of these uh, four selected pins went to low because that will indicate that one of these numbers are uh, pressed so then we check which was it so this is just the conversion of the uh, answer in binary to decimal number and we check uh, these numbers if one of these are the cases then we know that one of these buttons were pressed and finally you can see that here uh, p7 became 0 so we activated the last row or last line in the keypad which is the star 0 hash d and uh, then we do the same uh, exercise so everything is high and then we check which one of those became 0 and here I did a tiny change so I want to have a decimal uh, point or a decimal separator so when I press the star then I register a dot so that will be our decimal separator and uh, this is all so then uh, let's see how these are treated and how these are handled and uh, they are handled in the check input function so then uh, if a button was pressed so if you remember uh, this is set to true here or wherever we press the button uh, so if a button was uh, pressed and if we add the, that button to the string then we just do this uh, linking uh, so the full string becomes the full string plus the pressed character so we just uh, place the character at the end of this string and then of course this is printed on the uh, display and, uh, and that's all and uh, we also delete the content of the second uh, line uh, where we printed a number so this just removes some confusion and uh, then after we did this once we have to make sure that the string added is false and it stays false until we don't press a button again so we don't enter this part and we don't keep uh, the string expanding basically and then uh, we see that what happens if the pressed uh, character was A so of course when we press uh, a letter character on our keypad we do not say that the string added is true and I show you how this looks like so for example here as I said uh, earlier uh, we do not add this string added uh, line here because we don't want it to be registered uh, as a number as part of the number so then uh, this is skipped now but if the A was pressed then we just uh, print the full string and this is now still a string and now we convert this string into a double 
and then uh, we put it on the display but of course as a check uh, we print it on the serial port and after this all happens uh, we have to reset the full string so we have to sort of empty it and then uh, also we do the same with the converted number so we don't have any confusion and uh, the pressed character also has to be yeah, empty otherwise it will keep uh, Otherwise the code will keep entering this part and uh, that's not so good for us. And then we clear the first line when we did the conversion. So when we start entering a new number uh, in, in the first line, then it will show up as a new uh, clear uh, number. So then we can also enter this function if the pressed character was D and D stands for delete. So what happens here is that we chop off the last uh, character of the string. So what happens in this uh, substring function is that we take the full string, which is the wall number, or in this case, it is still the wall string. And then we start from the zero uh, part of the full string. So the first uh, character basically, and we move until the length minus one so that means that we only consider the new full string as the old full string minus the last character. So that, that happens here in this first line. And as a confirmation, I print this on the serial port. And what happens on the LCD is the following. So we put the cursor in the first line and then uh, we put the cursor to the eight plus the length of the full string which we just uh, created up here and why 8 is because uh, if you remember we printed the exact same thing here uh, on our LCD as well and the length of this with the space is 8 so I just show you with the cursor so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so the printing starts from here after the white space and then we also add the length of the of the full string and then we print a space there because we do not need to redraw the whole line we could do that maybe that's more simple but here I just wanted to chop off the last character because that will be not printed again and uh, that happens here and then we move back to the uh, very beginning of the number so just basically here and then then we print the full string so then let's say instead of two decimals now it will be just one decimal printed and if we don't do this then uh, the second decimal digit will be still there but with this we remove it and then uh, we do this but since we reprint the full string uh, we could actually simplify this part but yeah just I just don't do it here and uh, after we printed everything on the display we have to reset the pressed character so in the next iteration we will not come back here and basically this was the whole code so I explained both of these functions so let's see how it works with the serial port so I just open this and we got the same message as we have here. And then now I keep pressing some numbers uh, on the keypad and I will explain what happens on the display. So I just, I will enter 14.57. So 14.57. And now I press A. So here we just got uh, basically these numbers so serial.print and then one character and you see that I use the serial.print and not the print ln so that's why the numbers came after each other and then the a was also printed because obviously I, I printed that but here when I uh, press a or when I send a to the terminal I will add the line break with the with the usage of this uh, serial.print ln so that happens and since I pressed A uh, we entered this part of the function and then that uh, initiated the conversion so then first of all we printed the string which is the full string 
and then we also printed the conversion so the converted number is the same so this is just uh, this lot of serial dot print and print ln just to use just used to yeah prove everything here and now if i start typing uh, numbers again you can see that it starts from zero so we have this 254 dot 31 for example and then i press d as delete so now uh, the code entered this part and what happens is that uh, here of course we saw that we pressed the d but then the string here is the let's say shortened uh, string so now we got back this uh, without the character one and now i can press a and then the recent string is now converted into a uh, double so this was the string that we kept uh, in our uh, string variable and then uh, as i pressed a it was also converted into a double and uh, this is the double and since by default the serial that print Allen shows two digits then of course we did not have anything here so that was uh, zero so basically this was all uh, i hope that this will be helpful for you especially with this IO expander. I think it's a very useful thing and uh, it makes the life much more easier. As you can see, the coding is not so difficult. Maybe it can be further simplified. I'm not a programmer, so I might have missed uh, a few things, but at least I could make this keypad work and it works uh, in, in the intended way. So what I wanted to have here is basically, I wanted to be able to enter numbers and I wanted to be able to pass these numbers to some other variables and I also wanted to be able to uh, delete numbers if I mess up the typing. So all of these are realized and as I mentioned previously uh, this let's say project will be carried over to my step promoter control panel so you will see that uh, project being realized quite soon. So this was the whole video uh, don't forget to check my website, especially the tools part, because you will see all these parts that I uh, work with and you can buy them if you want uh, via affiliate links. And uh, you can find other interesting tools as well. So I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.